Feelings generated in the unconscious mind can create real physical changes in our bodies. These physical reactions can be stopped if we put our minds to it. 50 million. That's how many people in the U.S. suffer from chronic pain. An experience that is often so difficult to diagnose and treat. This is a big public health crisis. We are failing patients with chronic pain. We really need new answers. We really need new approaches. There's this new family of treatments that actually aims to eliminate the pain itself. So taking a model that says your pain is driven by brain processes, which are changeable, you can reverse your pain. I cry daily, you know, from the pain. I was just dealing with, you know, kind of constant pain in my lower back. I wasn't able to run and was told I probably wouldn't be able to be a runner again. I mean, I really had a hard time standing up or moving around. I had many years of living in pain with a lot of things that didn't work. Maybe I shouldn't go there but also the back pain industry is a multi-billion dollar program. And if this mind-body pain disorder were more conventionally accepted, it may have some negative economic repercussions. One common treatment we've used for chronic pain is opioids. Uh, we now know that's been disastrous. Every eight minutes, someone in America dies from a drug overdose. And the majority of those involve opioids. Opioids like oxycodone or hydrocodone. You're talking about drugs that are essentially heroin pills for common chronic pain conditions. When we look at surgeries for the back, like vertebroplasty, the data show convincingly no better than sham surgery. I think fundamentally there's a problem with the view that pain is by definition chronic and you have to live with it forever. I'm able to make the symptoms go away in, in a matter of minutes or seconds at times. I didn't have any more pain. My back was 100%. I'm now training for my second half marathon. Many, many people recover. Saro discovered that with thousands of patients. Well, I've come up with a different diagnosis that has to do with psychological things rather than physical things. People will get better if they learn what is actually going on. That is the true cause of the pain. Now, you dedicated in private parts your bestseller to Dr. Sarno. So what did he do? What was wrong with you? Well, Dr. Sarno saved me from a life of pain. I had such tremendous back pain for years. I went to two seminars. When we got done, our back pain lifted. How long have you been pain-free? Uh, five or six years. It's a miracle. You have to say, I know there's nothing wrong with my back or my neck to get over this syndrome. I first met Dr. Sarno early in the year 1992 when I was a second year resident. And he said, do you accept that 95% of spinal fusion surgeries is malpractice? And I said, I guess so. And I continued to study with Dr. Sarno for 20 years to treat patients with mind-body pain disorders. Dr. Sarno was really influential in the field. His work has really resurrected and pushed a lot of people, including myself, to look at chronic pain differently. In most cases, chronic pain is a protective response by the primal brain. It's not something that comes from the tissues of your body. 
the nervous system has plasticity. It changes and it morphs in response to stimuli. In chronic pain, it's not particularly a physical problem. I'm gonna tell you my story and why Dr. Sarno is sitting there and why as chairman, I had him here. I had an episode with my back, extremely painful. Well, I read this book by Dr. Sarno, Healing Back Pain. I began to follow his regimen and that was in 2004. I haven't had a back pain since. I've never had any surgery. I've never had steroid shots or anything like that. So I wonder why we're not looking at things like this. Why isn't this being looked at? Most healthcare providers really can't conceptualize that the chronic pain is due to sort of more like a central nervous system thing. They say, you know, there's a slipped disc, this, that, and the other thing, and it's probably not the situation. A slipped disc is like a belly button. Almost everybody has one. If you take 100 people who have no symptoms and you scan their backs, you'll find most of them have some misalignment and they have no pain whatsoever. In most cases, those kind of changes are not the cause of pain. The diagnoses were varied. It was herniated discs, slight scoliosis, facet joint syndrome. I had an MRI that was a displacement. I had, you know, top doctors who saw me and said, yeah, this will, this is a, this is a real medical issue. I really just wanted to understand what was going on with me. That's when I did make the appointment and, it, and Dr. Roshbaum confirmed that I would be a good candidate. As we went through and he looked at my MRI, he suggested that it would not cause the, the level of pain that I had been experiencing and that I was a good candidate. When someone's under a sufficient amount of stress and or tension, the normally functioning brain will try to protect you. Let's say, strange image, this were a hot stove, and I put my hand over it accidentally. I certainly wouldn't do it on purpose. What would I do? I would take my hand away. The hot surface is strong emotions inside our mind. The brain can create pain in accord with predicted threat. Prediction is a very difficult task, and the brain can get it wrong. Chronic pain seems to be connected with whether the brain senses danger. Dangers connected with relationships, environment, emotions, if you like. So we ran a clinical trial with 151 chronic back pain patients. One third of them received eight sessions with a therapist who helped uh, them learn techniques for retraining these brain pathways, for reducing fear, for making space for difficult feelings and processing stress in, in more healthy ways. We found that two-thirds of people were pain-free or nearly so using a psychological treatment. I've tried randomized clinical trials to test the ideas that Dr. Sarno first espoused, and largely he was right. Pain can go into remission when patients tackle those uh, unexpressed emotions that they've been not dealing with. It is anger and rage and frustration, disappointment, a list of feelings that I never really learned how to process. I didn't know how to identify it. I didn't know how to express them. And now I do. And as I think about that and process it, the symptoms subside. The process for me, you know, became a combination of things from the past, things that I was dealing with in the moment, and then kind of say to your mind, it sounds a bit strange, but say, you know, I'm aware of those feelings and I want to experience them. I stop it, don't, don't, don't cause pain in my back. I don't want to avoid these feelings. I'm aware of them and I want to experience them. The brain is always learning about the body. It can change its beliefs about what's happening in the body. That can then change the pain experience. Certain types of pain are more brain-based and other types of pain are more bodily based. So if we can make that distinction, we'll be able to help more people with the right type of treatment.